So, because I wanted to update you on uh, some copyright things that are going on behind the scenes. So, as of uh, as of recording this, the cost of Concordia as of this morning at 6 a.m. was manually claimed. It was claimed by a company, as you can see, RTI. The copyrighted content was the Pomerigio 5 underscore 190-12012.mpg. Now, obviously, uh, I ended up taking a look, as I always do, whenever I receive a copyright claim, what I end or haven't had a strike thankfully yet and i hope to keep it that way whenever i do receive a copyrighted copyright claim i look at the uh the content being claimed so for example there was a Yu-Gi-Oh reaction i did a while back where i played the the pink dolphins meme if you know you know <laughs> but it's the inner it's the the famous interview the keck w interview with the dude and you know the when i get a copyright claim for content like that where it's a a, a whole clip and i totally understand what's going on and it's you know that's completely fair or say for example i get a copyright claim by someone like uh, a big music studio or a a very prominent sound uh company let's put it that way and it does fall over eight seconds which is actually why in the more uh, modern badger videos that i do especially when looking at his older content i try to uh, lower the volume at certain parts to just avoid that altogether so i looked at the uh the offending parts as rti had claimed and it was a 17 second clip and a three second clip so if I were to trim out the segments, which would have been required by this, I could not mute the segments. I had to trim them out as the copyright claim would have had me do. And I took a look at those three seconds. I have no idea how that passed uh, past standards. I have no idea because as far as I'm aware, DMCA only takes place over seven seconds. That being said, I'm, I could definitely be wrong. And if someone does have more insight into the copyright policy than I do, please, I'd be very interested to hear your point. And alas, I did look at the 17 second section they were claiming. And the first about four to five seconds was Internet Historian talking. There was nothing playing in the background. It was Internet Historian talking. There was a zoom of the space specifically. And then the next, you know, uh, about four seconds was me talking. It swapped to, swapped to a news clip, which I'm assuming is the one that uh, the one it was of a uh, captain uh, Scatetti. It was it was him being uh, uh, apprehended by authorities, and I was talking for about four seconds. So, and these are all approximations. I'd have to pull up the exact timestamps, but these are all approximations of those. The next four seconds was just me talking. The clip was paused, and I was just talking. And then obviously the last like eight seconds, it was about seven, eight seconds, which would, as far as I'm aware, fall under DMCA being DMCA able. And you know, that one, it's like, okay, if you're claiming the eight seconds, claim the eight seconds, do not claim 17 seconds to stuff you do to clearly not own. So I wrote three paragraphs. I wrote a paragraph in regards to the 17 seconds. I provided a timestamp. I said, this is absolutely inappropriate. This is inappropriate. I do feel that this is not professional to not claim what you own and you're just claiming whatever you want effectively. And the three, the second paragraph was about the three seconds. You know, as far as I'm aware, DMCA is only seven plus seconds. How did this go through under three seconds? Apparently, you know, it, do you allegedly not read copyright? You know, is there something that I'm missing here? This doesn't look professional. And the last paragraph, because here's the thing. When I do a counterclaim, I have to do a signature. My legal name is not public, and I would like to keep that way for as long as possible. My legal name is not public. So when I have to file a counterclaim, I have to use my real name. My legal name is a signature. And not my, you know, just, I have to use it. And so when I submit that in that third paragraph, I cite, look, you have, you have clearly said you claim things that are outside of this clip because at this point you are now claiming my content. You are claiming this, right? You have claimed sections where I am just talking. So clearly you're claiming my content, my brand, right? You know, I need to see the legal name of the person making this. I need to see date of birth because, uh, you know, I, honestly, as far as I'm aware, this could be easily tracked down by YouTube or the Internet. And this is an anti-bot measure, I said. I need the company you're working for. I need your position in the company you're working for, you know, whether an executive, whether they're higher up, whether a MOOC, whatever, right? You know, and I need legal and notarized documentation on how you own my content. Because at the very least, if you're claiming the eight seconds, okay, then we can talk. And, you know, obviously, as I've stated, if I'm outside of bounds, cool. I'm more than happy to do that. I'm more than happy to take something down if, you know, if I feel that it is, in fact, in violation of DMCA. Perfectly fine with that. Where this isn't, and this company is trying to claim outside of that eight seconds, specifically with me talking, I am not affiliated with RTI. I'm not, a, you know, partnered with RTI. They are not representative of me. Them filing this claim, I'm not willing to let go. I'm really not. 
And in fact, you know, if anyone knows this RTI company, I'd be more than happy to get their phone number and talk to them personally. More than happy to reach out to them. I reached out to an RTI earlier. Uh, looks like they were in North Carolina, but obviously I got to their voice machine. So we'll see on that. Now, after using my legal name as a signature, after filing a counterclaim, as you can see, this is about 6.33 a.m. We go to 6.59 a.m. I get most of this till probably about 6.50, 6.52 ish was me writing, me typing out this three paragraph, you know, effectively dissertation on excuse you. I, I flirt with that character. Let's put it that way. And they said they received my, uh, my, my, my counterclaim. They said they received it. And we go to what's this five minutes after the counterclaim RTI is releasing it. I don't th think this is acceptable. And here's the thing, whether RTI as a company and whether a company does release this or not, right? You have at this point set forth, you are claiming you own content. And so, yeah, I'm going to be a little upset. I'm going to have similar uh, views to installation zero zero in regards to potential and alleged copyright abuse. So this company, you know, and I, I did tweet out to YouTube. Give me just a second. I can actually pull up receipts for that. I, I did tweet out to uh, YouTube earlier today and I didn't get much of a response. And, you know, I, I at this point I am looking for clarification and guidance on this because I need something to happen. So obviously go on Twitter. I have the the whole thing. I have the whole post that I put on YouTube earlier and I, uh, you know, updated the situation. I said, I want con, uh, you know, I would like to get in contact in regards to requesting all the proper legal notarized documentation regarding the claimant's proof of ownership and abuse of the copyright claim second for the three, uh, three second claim is effectively on the second one. I am 100% serious. And I did update that within that five minute time frame. They did release that. Uh, if we took a look a little bit further though, I'm trying to figure out which thread it's under team YouTube did respond. We take the misuse of our copyright tools very seriously and take strong action. When you find abuse, including terminating channels and kicking companies out of content 90, please continue to dispute claims. If you think they were made an error. I do not think they legally can do this because as far as I'm aware, especially when strikes get involved, the reason they say they do not say you can, uh, the reason that YouTube does not say to dispute strikes or, or do certain things is because it would classify as legal advice. So I don't know who's who's helming this here. This could classify as legal advice. I said the claim is already disputed. Then they released it within minutes after submitting receipts. We saw five minutes. The claimant is claiming to own content specifically of me. And now they have made, uh, they have my legal name from the counterclaim document. They submitted the claim and I want their information which team YouTube totally understand your concern. We do investigate abuse of our copyright tools and processes more here. Obviously there's only so much they can do. There's only so much PR that they can give. If you know about this RTI company or if this RTI company comes across this, you did claim my content. You did claim a specific section of the video. And I do have timestamps up in that post that you did claim this content. I would very much like to get in contact with you and discuss, and I need to get your notarized and legal documentation on how you own me specifically speaking. This is not funny. This is not a joke. If, if this is a if this is an example of copyright abuse, I absolutely want to hop on this because there are so many creators installation zero zero as Queen mentioned in comment. There's so many creators right now that are being targeted by and not just companies. I totally understand if you upload an entire 30 seconds of the Avengers, right? Yeah, Marvel's going to DMCA you. That totally makes sense. However, when you have a, this claim by RTI group for Pomerigio 5 underscore 190120012.mpg and you are not claiming that specific clip you are claiming me just talking in your claim okay we have a problem so I, if anyone's experiencing copyright issues this is going to be a summary of what I'm having to deal with how I've dealt with this YouTube obviously does not facilitate and cannot encourage me and will generally as far as I'm aware will not actually uh, assist in you know providing those document in you know, those documents so naturally this goes to me finding this company reaching out to this company and saying no look you released the claim however you did say that you that you owned this you did say you claimed this i'm not letting you back off from this you know i'm not pursuing legal action at this time you did claim this you i i need that documentation i need whoever said this because this is ridiculous that now you have my name so, alas, that's kind of the situation at hand. It was a little bit of a, a stressor this morning. So there were multiple posts made on that, but this is getting ridiculous and this needs to get fixed and addressed. And this is this is utterly just bonkers <laughs> to say the least. So let me know in the comments section if you're on the channel, if you have a uh, if you have a similar copyright experience, if you think that this is bullshit, if you think that this is unfounded, if you think that YouTube needs to step in on things like this more, if you think that copyright as a policy needs to be overridden completely and potentially reinstated under different you know policies, let me know in the comments section.
for clarification, do not harass this creator. Do not harass this company. Do not harass this corporation if they may be one. This is between me and RTI. They were the ones that wanted to initiate this claim, and whether they took it back or not, they did choose to initiate this claim. They did acknowledge, as far as I'm aware legally, that this was a valid claim and submitted it anyways. So please, I do not condone harassment. I do not condone bullying. I do not condone, quote unquote, hunting people down. I am going to take care of this in the best capacity that I can. Please do not harass them. Do not bully them. I will deal with them myself as, as soon as I can find their information. Please respect that decision, and please, please... Don't do anything stupid, okay? <laughs> Thank you.